Hello, and welcome to this SAP Material Ledger and Actual Costing course. I want to thank you very much for signing up for this course, and I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to teach you all the most important things you need to know about Material Ledger and show you how the ledger is used to perform actual product costing. Product costing is often viewed as a complicated topic in SAP, and Material Ledger brings yet another layer of possibilities how to manage costs in the system. But in my opinion, Material Ledger is not making things any more complicated, but by increasing visibility about the cost of your business, it's actually making the whole costing process more clear and easy to understand. As it is common with SAP, with every new functionality or module that is released, the users are faced with a large number of new confusing terminology and often ambiguous instructions. This has also been true with Material Ledger. But during this course, I will prove to you that this module is actually not that difficult to understand and that all that is needed to understand its key functionalities is one simple but comprehensive example scenario which demonstrates how things are working in practice. The main purpose of this course is to offer you a realistic costing scenario that you can yourself start expanding and experimenting with. We will not go through every single configuration screen in detail and explore all possible alternatives how you can utilize Material Ledger. All efforts are placed in offering you one end-to-end -end scenario that demonstrates how the different submodules are linked with each other and how the costs are flowing inside the system through controlling, finance, material management, and production planning modules. As you know, to fully understand how SAP works takes a lot of curiosity and playing around in a sandbox environment. Once you understand how one complete costing scenario is set up, it is easy for you to start expanding your knowledge and become an expert of the topic. The structure of this course is as following. We will first start with a short slide set that introduces all the key concepts related to material ledger and actual costing. I will also introduce you to our costing scenario that is based on a real life company. I know that just looking at slides can be boring, so I will try my best to go through the slides as efficiently as possible so we can maximize the time that we are spending in the actual system. After we have finished our short theory session, we will start looking at the most important configuration related to Material Ledger. Again, I won't be spending too much time at explaining different configuration screens, as the only way to fully understand the effects of different configuration settings is through practical examples. The goal is just to quickly go through the settings we need to maintain for our example scenario. We will also be coming back to the key configuration transactions during the other chapters to demonstrate the connections between config settings and actual system functionality. After finishing our configuration review, it's time to start going through our example costing scenario and begin to manufacture pulp. If you don't know what pulp is, don't worry. After this course, you will pretty much be an expert of the topic. We will be examining what kind of postings the system is recording into the material ledger when materials are moved during the procurement and manufacturing processes. The final part of the course is dedicated for the period end closing process, which usually raises the most questions. This is probably the most challenging, but also the most important chapter of this course, so we have saved the best for last. During this chapter, we will see how actual costing functionality is using the postings recorded into the material ledger to calculate actual costs of your materials. We will also be looking at the most useful reports available in the system. Before we start our course, a word about the prerequisites for taking this course. This course is a direct sequel for our product cost controlling course, and the example scenario we are using is built around the same setup used during this course. It is completely fine for you to take this course without first completing the previous course. However, this course assumes that you have a good basic understanding of how product costing is working in SAP, and you are familiar with the key terms related to controlling. If you've not worked with costing or controlling module before, I strongly recommend you to first take our previous course or any other SAP course that explains the basics of this module. And now, it's time to start learning how Material Ledger works. I can guarantee that by the end of this course, you will have an excellent understanding how the actual costing works in the system and will be ready to implement realistic costing scenarios utilizing the material ledger. Before we start talking more about material ledger, let's take one step back and look at things from the module perspective. As you know, SAP consists of various functional modules that are further divided into submodules. 
Here, you can see all the submodules related to the controlling module. In this course, I won't be going through the functionality of all these modules in detail, as I'm assuming that you already understand the basics of SAP's controlling and product costing modules. So why are we talking about the controlling module? This is because that despite its name, Material Ledger is not part of the Material Management module, but part of the Product Cost Controlling submodule. But as we will see during this course, Material Ledger is closely connected with MM module and also with Financial Accounting and Production Planning. Product Costing submodule is divided into three smaller modules, Product Cost Planning, Cost Object Controlling, and Actual Costing slash Material Ledger modules. Product cost planning deals with planning costs for materials and activities and calculating planned prices for semi-finished and finished materials. Cost object controlling is about assigning costs to cost objects like production orders. As you can see, SAP has named the module we are focusing on during this course as actual costing slash material ledger, despite the fact that actual costing and material ledger are not the same thing. This is something we will be discussing more in a minute. So why has SAP created this module? The end goal of material ledger and actual costing is to achieve better visibility of the actual costs of your business. If you have been working with a large international manufacturing company before, you know that calculating costs for your raw materials and finished materials can be very complicated and often requiring a lot of political decisions. It is common that within a company, some parties would like to see certain materials valuated with prices as high as possible, but some other parties or departments would like that materials would carry as little cost as possible. Material ledger can be utilized to assign cost to materials with a more accurate way than possible with traditional costing. However, it's important to remember that it's impossible to come up with a completely precise and perfect way to assign cost and evaluate the products you are manufacturing. The management of a company always needs to make certain key decisions between competing costing related arguments and rely on some assumptions or estimates about costs. Before we start discussing more about Material Ledger, let's take one step back and have a quick recap of the two different price control options which SAP allows you to use to evaluate your materials in your company's balance sheet. The first option, Standard Price, means that a material and all the movements of this material are evaluated with a price that remains fixed for at least one full period. For finished and semi-finished materials, a standard price is usually calculated using a costing run, which provides us a standard cost estimate. A standard price makes things more transparent from a controlling and cost comparison point of view when the valuation prices of the materials stay the same for the whole period. The standard price is always used for finished and semi-finished materials, but for raw materials, there is also another option that can be used. When you are using a moving average price control, a new material price is calculated after every goods receipt, invoice receipt, or order settlement. This material price is an average value calculated using the total inventory value and the total quantity of the material in stock. It is common that certain raw materials can be purchased from multiple vendors with different prices. In these cases, using a moving average price can help you to maintain an accurate valuation price without the need of constantly manually changing the standard price if there is a lot of fluctuation with raw material prices. However, using a moving average price has many disadvantages which is why most companies prefer to value also their raw materials with standard prices. The main disadvantage of using a moving average price is that the price used to evaluate a material consumption is dependent on the time at which the goods issue is posted in the system. For example, if an invoice receipt for raw materials purchased is posted in the system after the raw materials were consumed during production, the invoice value is not reflected in the value of the consumption postings. This means that the raw material consumption is not evaluated with its actual procurement cost. The fact that the moving average price is not dependent on the period can also lead to incorrect material valuation, as goods movements that are posted to a previous period are not evaluated with the price from that period, but rather with the current moving average price. SAP Material Ledger provides an alternative way to evaluate your materials that tries to combine the advantages of standard price and moving average price methods. When you have activated Material Ledger and Actual Costing functionality, an additional weighted moving average price based on the actual material prices of a period is calculated for your materials. This actual average price, known as Periodic Unit Price, 
can be used to reevaluate your inventory based on the actual cost that the materials were when acquired or manufactured. The details of how the system is calculating this price will be discussed in the fourth chapter of this course. Next, let's discuss what the material ledger actually is. Just like general ledger or different subledgers in SAP, material ledger is a collection of documents that are created after various transactions are posted in the system. The main function of material ledger documents is to collect the price differences between the material valuation price and the actual price of the material. When material ledger is activated, every time you post a material movement, the system will create a material ledger document that displays the price difference between the material valuation price and the actual material price. For example, if you use a standard price of $1,000 to evaluate a certain material in your inventory and you purchase this material for $900, this difference is recorded to a material ledger document. There are four main types of price differences that are posted to the material ledger. I already used this purchase price difference as an example of a difference recorded in a material ledger document, but this is not the only type of price difference that can occur. Exchange rate difference occurs when the exchange rate of the goods receipt posting is different from the exchange rate that was used at the time when an invoice for the purchased materials was posted. The same can be true if an invoice is posted before a goods receipt is done. The third type of price difference is caused by the settlement process that is done during the period end closing. When you are posting settlements after variances have been calculated for finished and WIP manufacturing orders, the price differences related to these settlement postings are recorded in the material ledger documents. The fourth type of price difference occurs during stock transfers. When stocks are moved between different plants that are valuing the material using a different standard price, the price difference of the valuation prices is posted to the material ledger. I will be showing you examples of all these price different types during this course, so if you don't fully understand the reasons for these different types, don't worry. They will all become clear to you through practical examples. So what's the reason why these price differences are posted to Material Ledger? The answer is that the system will be using these price differences to calculate actual costs for the materials. In other words, Material Ledger postings are used to perform actual costing in the system. This actual costing is the first main function of material ledger. As mentioned before, material ledger and actual costings are not the same thing, but material ledger makes actual costing possible. In S4 HANA, it is mandatory to activate material ledger, but it is not necessary to activate actual costing. In the next chapter, we will see that different configuration screens exist for material ledger and actual costing specific settings. In addition to actual costing, Material Ledger allows you to value your materials using different valuation views that can be using currencies. If you are not using Material Ledger, you can only value your stocks in a single currency. The most common setup is that you have one valuation view for legal valuation that is using the company code currency and a second valuation view that is using the group's or the parent company's currency. This second valuation view is used to enable reporting across multiple subsidiaries that are all using different currencies you can manage a maximum of three valuation views in the system. It is also possible to create a profit center specific valuation view in which internal goods movements between different profit centers within the group are valued with a specific price. This can be used to manage transfer pricing of intercompany transactions. As discussed before, material ledger makes it possible to conduct actual costing for materials. Actual costing functionality is based on this flow. Throughout a certain period or month, Material Ledger records all material movements with financial impact and calculates price differences between actual prices and current material valuation prices. This is something that happens automatically when Material Ledger is activated. A Material Ledger document is posted every time when a material is moved in the system. At the end of each period, periodic unit prices are calculated for each of the materials. These periodic unit prices represent the actual cost of the materials and are based on the price difference postings recorded to the material ledger. After the periodic unit prices are calculated, you have the opportunity to reevaluate your materials using this new price and use periodic unit prices as the new standard prices for your materials. But the material revaluation is not a mandatory step. 
The material ledger was originally developed to meet the legal requirements of certain countries to revaluate the inventory of a company using actual costs at the end of each period. But most of the countries do not impose these kind of requirements, and many companies prefer not to revaluate their inventory this often. Actual costing functionality allows you to choose how often you want to revaluate your inventory and also select which materials to revaluate. You can, for example, only revaluate materials for which major price changes have happened. Even if you do not wish to reevaluate your materials with actual costs, periodic unit prices provide you very valuable information about the actual cost of your business. So activating actual costing functionality makes a lot of sense only from the cost visibility point of view. But what happens to the price differences recorded during a period if you choose not to reevaluate your materials? The price differences do not disappear anywhere, but they are passed on to the next period. This is something we will be discussing a lot later in this course when we are examining the actual costing period and process. During the next period, this same flow continues. Price differences are recorded against the standard prices, and these prices together with any existing price differences recorded during the previous periods will be used again to calculate new periodic unit prices. We have now finished the short theory session of this course. Next, it's time to introduce you to our example company and to the costing scenario we will be using. The costing scenario is based on the same example we were using during our previous cost controlling course. In this course, we will just expand the scenario to cover also material ledger and actual costing functionality. For those who have not taken our courses before, it's time to introduce you to wood pulp. Our example company owns a pulp mill in China that produces half a million tons of wood pulp per year. Wood pulp, also known as paper pulp, is a raw material that is used to produce a variety of paper and paperboard products, including magazine paper, napkins, folding cartons, and so on. Pulp is not very famous as a raw material, despite the fact we are all using countless pulp-based products every single day in our everyday life. Pulp is a great example of process manufacturing and is an excellent material to use to explain how product costing and material ledger are working. So how to make wood pulp. I hope all our previous students remember this slide. The most important raw material for pulp is chopped wood chips. Together with various chemicals, the wood chips are first cooked, then bleached, and finally pressed and packaged into neat bales that can be shipped anywhere in the world. Based on the type of wood chips and the types of chemicals used, different varieties of pulp can be produced. But we will not get only pulp out of this manufacturing process. We will also get something called black liquor as a byproduct. Black liquor is an extremely useful byproduct that can be used to produce electricity. In Chapter 3, we will be manufacturing pulp in the system, which in my opinion will be the most fun part of this course. Here's the structure of our simple example company, or more precisely, a group. Our parent company is based in Germany. The parent company fully owns the Chinese subsidiary that is registered as its own legal company in China. All the manufacturing will be happening in China. So things are a little bit different during this course compared to the previous cost controlling course, as we won't be using the German plant to produce pulp, but we have decided to utilize the sometimes risky opportunities for cheaper manufacturing provided by China. As you have learned, material ledger allows us to maintain multiple valuation views for raw and finished materials. It is always necessary for us to maintain a legal valuation view that is using the same currency as the company code is using, in this case the Chinese yuan. In addition to the legal valuation view, our example company will be using an additional valuation view that has euro as the material valuation currency. This view is called the group valuation view. In addition to these views, there will be one more view that can be used for profit center specific valuation. This view is something we won't be talking too much about during this as we have a separate course focusing on profit centers and transfer prices. We have now finally completed the theory and introduction section of this course. I want to thank you for your attention and patience so far. I promise you that things will get much more interesting as we actually start playing around in the system. In the next chapter, we will start examining the key configuration related to the material ledger and actual costing.